Hey everyone, this week's video is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna show you how not to make a homemade press brake and then how to fix it once it fails. Check it out. Garage time. So this press brake was homemade and the whole point of a press brake is to bend linear bends in sheet metal, um, usually up to about 90 degrees. You can do a little bit more with the correct dies. So you can see that these two rods here are um, where a flat piece of sheet metal would lay on top of. And then this knife edge just comes right down on top of it and uh, and bends it until these 45 degree angles contact these, uh, these round bars. And it essentially stops itself at a 90 degree bend or close to it. But the operation's pretty simple. It's just a metal frame with some legs on it. So it sits on my bench. I usually store this underneath a rack so, or underneath a shelf. So it's, that's why it's not a bench height. This center bar here is removable. This is a 20 ton um, hydraulic jack. And then these springs here sort of counteract the weight of the jack. So this thing automatically lifts up when you release pressure. This center bar that the uh, jack presses on is sandwiched between these two vertical bars. And then it has these uh, rolling um, bearings here that prevent it from really getting too far sideways. And it kind of keeps this thing centered in its frame. The uh, used to have a little clip on here. It's fallen off and I think I lost one of the sleeve bearings. So I need to reattach the, uh, the clips onto each side. This one also lost its, its bearing. The base was made for these dies here. These are actually commercial uh, brake dies that I, I purchased on eBay. This is for some lighter gauge material. But uh, you know, this is designed to just slide in there. And then this guy here um, you know, comes down and makes the bend. There's a channel inside this bar here that retains these dies. So normally this die would slide into the middle. You can adjust its position and then screw it in with these clamps. But because this is so bent, I can't even get this to slide all the way in. Okay, the material on this upper beam is a uh, quarter inch thick. It, this is two inches by four inches. And then the material on this centerpiece, which is the problem, is also two inch square, but this is only like um, 90 wall thickness. It's just not, just not heavy duty enough. These vertical tubes are uh, two inch also, but the same thickness. That's like 090 thickness. This bottom rail is also thinner. This is eighth inch thick but it has these uh, solid bars on top of it. So this doesn't bend. The upper piece here doesn't bend. Um, it's really just, this is the weak point. So I'm gonna be replacing this piece today. So that's how you take care of a you know, misbehaving tube. I've saved all the original components, but this uh, center section is toast. 
Okay, so here's the tube that I'm going to replace that other one with. This one is a quarter inch wall, so it's gonna be stronger. Plus I'm gonna add something inside it so it doesn't just crush again. But I don't need to be bending titanium either. Okay, now it's time to reconstruct um, this bar and I'm reusing the old pieces. This is the profile of this uh, die right here. Um, it is designed with a little slot in here so you can uh, slide it in from the side and then it won't just fall out of the slots. This part has the opposite of the L shapes. When this slides in, it goes inside this one right here. Okay, just in case that didn't make sense, here's how that is designed to work. These have a little bit of a bow to it, so I've only welded it on one side. I'm gonna clamp uh, these together so that it's uh, perfectly flat. Okay, I got this uh, welded together, so I think it's, you know, it's gonna be good enough. Okay, a little bit of clearance is needed between these roller bearings and the uh, side supports. So I've just clamped in a piece of thin uh, copper just to space it out a little bit. I'm gonna weld right here like it was on the previous bar, and uh, that should be enough clearance on both sides. Now it's time to weld these uh, little hook brackets for the springs, kind of right where they used to be. Okay, the springs are really uh, two springs, one spring inside the other. This is, uh, you know, probably uh, five eighths and this is about an inch. So I'm just gonna reattach them. This new bar is heavier than the old bar, so I may need to add um, another group of springs. Okay, I think everything's uh, back in business. Sort of drifts a little bit this way when it's undone. I think these, um, these bushings need to be, or these bearings need to go to the next size up because there's just a little bit too much play side to side. So just go to the next size up on those bearings, but otherwise it's, uh, it's working really well. Let's bend something. Okay, here's just a scrap piece of 20 gauge and these dies, I, it doesn't really label how much they're good for, but I think this is good to about 16 or 18 gauge. 
So this should be pretty easy for it. So that is a, uh, that's a perfect bend. Now you can see the die marks right here. And on the inside, this is a very tight radius. Here's some 16 gauge. So also a very tight bend. It looks like there was a little bit too much pressure on one side, and, and that just really comes down to how well the jack is centered on the dies. I mean, if this was a bigger press, it might make sense to have a jack on the left and a jack on the right so you get better control. I think these bushings would help a little bit, but when this happens, you know, I, I don't do a lot of bending, but when, um, when this happens, I just put it back in Sometimes on these bends, you got to kind of sneak up on it. You don't want to just crush it. So that's pretty close to 90 right there. And this is a rusty piece of metal, so you can actually see the lines from the die. I don't think I would go any thicker than um, 16 gauge on these dies. I mean, you could do it, but it takes a lot of force and it's really just overloading the dies. So you don't need this tight of a bend radius on something this thick. So let me try the other dies. I'll show you what they do. Okay, these dies are clearly homemade, but the principle's the same. So this die here doesn't have the, uh, the channel on it. Um, it just is just goes straight in and then these bolts hold it in place So I'm gonna put this one back in um, This is probably the wrong die for 16 gauge, but let's just see what happens to show you the different bend radius Okay, these, dar these dies are not professional. They're not as nice. So you can get a little bit uh, in trouble with one of these, but it does bend it. It's still a pretty good bend. Um, this curvature here was only because it ran into itself. So, you know, a lot of this, you can kind of just bend back by hand, but you can see the, the die lines on this one. They're just further apart, which means it requires less force. And then if you look on the inside, this uh, bend radius is not as tight as this one. This one's uh, very tight. This one is a little bit less. Okay, here's a piece of eighth inch steel and I'm just gonna put it in there. Normally you would have a line on the metal and you would you know, line it up with the, with the uh, V on the die, but I'm just, uh, just showing the capabilities here. You can also set up backstops on the backside so if you're doing multiple pieces, you can set up some, some stops on the back to kind of guide it. I've never really done a lot of repetitive bends on this, so I haven't fully set it up for uh, that kind of work, but you can.
Okay, this is, I'm pulling pretty hard on this. This is a pretty long span. This is probably uh, 10 inches. And you know, it does take some force. There you go. Try doing that with a uh, hammer and dolly. It might take a while. Once again, you can see the die marks on the, the part and that's, um, that's just a function of the spacing of the dies. If you wanted to do something thicker, you probably could, but you would need these further apart and you probably couldn't do the full width. Um, I've never done anything wider than just this, but clearly you can make a die that would be, you know, the full width of the press. But the tonnage goes up uh, incredibly high once you get to the full width. Okay, I just went in my um, drawer and pulled out some of the crazy dies that I've developed over the years. This is to create multiple bends in a piece of sheet metal. Uh, you can see it's totally cobbled together but it probably worked at least once, you know, so I got something out of that. Here's a die that I used to shape some wire. I think I, I formed some wire. I don't, I don't know, oh yeah. So this went inside here like this. This went like this and uh, it created a bend in some linear wire. What was that? This was made out of like rebar. This setup here is to do square tubing. So I was bending some tube and putting like a 20 degree angle in it. So I'd lay the tube across here. This die went in here and I would clamp it on the tube and then it would come down like this and uh, put a little bend in the tube. Obviously it, um, it kind of followed this radius right here. You can see there's a radius in there. It did kink the tube slightly, but because I clamp it with these two sides, uh, the kinking wasn't too bad. It basically just dimpled the inside. So there's some heavy gauge uh, bolts here. I just, you know, impact wrenched it closed. Yeah, this, this is a, um, not really a linear die. This one is, creates a round dimple in sheet metal. You guys remember this? This was from when I did the, uh, the dimple die. I, uh, I made this in here and I had a female portion made out of wood that had a chamfer on it and that created the uh, dimples. That wasn't too long ago. This is the tool that created these speed holes. Fits right in there. This is just a carriage bolt into a chamfered hole. Also, you might remember this dimple die. I made uh, this to work on the strut tower braces in the front. I made a really long video about the front strut tower and how effective it is. I did some testing, I made my own brackets. In order for that strut bar to work, the conclusion is that it needs diagonal bars. So a diagonal from the upper side down to this lower side and from this upper side down to this lower side. So kind of making an X with a bar along the top. That's the only way I was able to actually see any improvement in torsional rigidity and chassis stiffness in the front. So I am offering these. I have a whole box of them now for sale. So contact me if you're interested in these. Um, my email is in the about section. The $80 for the pair, it includes the lower brackets. They're already welded on. Better than what you can buy currently and cheaper.
This wall thickness here is much, much thicker than it was before. So I don't think the tube's gonna collapse again, but just to be certain, I am going to stuff it with something like this. This is, uh, you know, not much stronger, this super thin wall, but I think I'm gonna get a solid piece of aluminum. When the tube gets some pressure from the jack, it can transfer it right, uh, right through the hollow section into the die. It does do a great job though on aluminum. And uh, the, the thing with aluminum is you need a bigger bend radius. So I like to use this die for aluminum. And also, you know, don't try to bend 6061T6. Anything that's hardened uh, is just gonna crack. I mean, you can bend it, but it's gonna crack. I recommend 5052 if you're going to do, 5052H2 if you're going to do anything out of aluminum that is uh, formed. So I'm happy to have it back in operation. Um, I have gone through a lot of projects with this. It's very versatile, really handy to have in the shop. A um, Couple things I still need to do, like I mentioned, I need to probably put some bigger stays on the side here to keep it sort of more centered, a little bit more controllable. You can see when the die comes up, sometimes it shifts a little bit left and right. That's because these bearings are just a little too small. I'm gonna size them up. Also, like I mentioned, I'm gonna stuff this main tube with something solid. Now, I don't anticipate this to um, crush again. It's heavier wall. I know the limitations. I'm not gonna try to bend, you know, heavy gauge uh, titanium anymore. So that's, uh, that's kind of it for, for this device. If you wanna make improvements to this um, or make your own dies, you know, please be careful. I made everything out of, um, you know, just mild steel. You don't wanna do anything out of cast iron. Cast iron um, tends to explode when it's under pressure and it exceeds its strength limit. Um, this stuff, if it's gonna bend like you saw in the previous design, uh, it's just gonna squish and it's not going to really explode and hurt you. These dies here are probably hardened, at least on the surface. So you wanna be careful with those. You should wear safety goggles, you know, stand back. Be careful when you're working with this much pressure. Obviously it's, um, you know, 20 tons can do a lot of damage. You could add a pressure gauge to the jack if you wanna know how much force is going in, into, the, uh, into the actual steel. That's helpful if you're trying to do repeatable things, you wanna get the same pressure each time. Or you could also put an air cylinder in here. Um, I don't really recommend that if you wanna make it this automated. Um, I think being homemade, you know, you just have to accept that it's kind of a slow process. Uh, you don't wanna over, over crank this or over stress it. So I like the way it is. It's, uh, it's a great machine. Thank you for watching. Now you know how not to make a press break and how to fix it. So this should last for a long time to come and hopefully you'll be able to watch me make things on this machine here in the near future. Please check back soon. Have a great week.